Welcome to the farm. Right now we're in Pamlico County in between Arapaho, kind of near Oriental, where Camp Seagull and Seafair are. Hooking up a, I'm thinking about hooking up a trailer. So we're going on a farm tour right now with Bossy Hardison. And he's thinking about doing tours, so this will be the introductory tour right here. I'll give you a little history. My family has been on this part of land since 1834, but the family's been here since the 1700s. This is a long leaf ecosystem. This is the way it looks like. you got clean underneath and long leaf pine. And these are all long leaves. Well, there's, there's a few, them big ones are loblolly. Long okay. ones got real long needles. 100 years ago, we used to be in the Tri-State State, 60 million acres of long leaf, and now there's only 2 million acres. So they're trying to bring the long leaf back, but it's slow growing. And that's a long leaf right there. Yeah, that's, that's in the grass stage. It's a little slow, slow, slow growing. So 100 years to mature? Probably 60 or 80. Some cool looking trails and stuff back there. But it's pretty looking back too though. You got little little hills and oh, yeah. These are the blueberry. The blueberry. Organic. I live on the same ridge, about 46, 45, 46 foot of bus And what does organic mean? Organic means I don't put no pesticide and no fertilizer. They okay. go natural. On what they call a salt and pepper, hard pan, um, soil that naturally grows blueberries. So I'm putting back on the farm what you would see a hundred years ago. So I don't put no pesticide and no fertilizer. So this sand ridge, Minnesot Scarf, runs from Minnesot Beach and the Neuse River to Core Point on Pamico Road. The old Indian Trail, right in 1700s, it's a blaze trail that the Indians blazed. And they would carry their canoes from the Core Point to Minnesot. I like woodscaping, landscaping, and it takes years and years. And what I'm doing here is cleaning the underbrush, running my cows, and opening it where you can see all the way down to what we call the swamp field. Sand hill. This is what we call low grounds, and then it hits what we call swamp. Elevation drop 46 feet to 18 feet. Usually during hurricanes, don't get flooded. Them cypress, they take, take six to 80 years to grow them. That's not true. Them trees there are not about 20, 25 years old. And look how big they are. I could cut them for saw logs. This area here has always kind of been grazing land. No. Did you make no. it into that? I made it. I so it had the trees and everything on it? Uh, yeah, this was pretty well closed up. Uh, my grand, great great grandfather started clearing land down here in 1834. But wow. I'm always like landscaping and I started changing it 40 years ago. I opened it up with many more pasture land. Then I had to get approval from the government. They give me approval because it's not a wetland. You see all the way down to the Buckland Road, which is six miles. Yeah. People said, I didn't know you had a farm back here. And I said, <laughs> well, go down to Buckland Road. Road, you look north, the farthest you can see, that's on my farm. The farthest north of the farmers, then it goes a mile or two, you got some more farmers. Wow. And this is just pasture for the cows and stuff up yeah. here? Look, way down there, you see houses? Yeah. That's the Kershaw Road. Yep. But if you You're look farther yep. down the farthest woods, that's the Buckland Road that goes off the street. So that looks like a couple probably, miles over there. Probably 2,000 acres of uh, farming. My great great grandfather had a house down here, like 1834. I think it was up on the little, there's a little bit of knoll, about 50 yards there. And Where does the water come from for here? Off the sand. The sand hills got under, underground springs. Okay. And the pond will go back by. It never goes dry during drought. It's just spring water. So anyway, this is an impoundment. We built that back in 77. My dad never got to hunt it. But sometimes I put on my, my picture this little trail through here. Look, you get ahead. No gators? Two across the road in my neighbor's pond. But I oh, yeah? Seen any, but I keep my eyes open. Are those still active over there? No, one of the things the 306 crossing the road above the Rapaho sign and got hit. But Beard Street, I, I was telling my wife, they had a dog that got hit. And uh, it's loaded up there. That one was 12 and a half foot. A lot of my things were raised on Beard Street. The lower part and the upper part. And I'm saying about 17 and 18 years. And when you say the lower part and the upper part, what do you mean? Cause I mean okay, upper part is above the bridge. Well, okay. The lower part is going through the mouth. Okay. So that's where it breaks right there at the bridge? Uh, 
I kind of break it there. Yeah, that's but it really goes up to about Roberts Road. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that. And that's about it. The west prong, though, the, the east prong actually comes up just behind the neighbor's house, 100 yards from me. That's called Long Branch. That's where the alligators we think came out Long Branch. Consider all this part of the impoundment right here? Yeah, yeah. In other words, you've got a canal. This is the impoundment. And it's land, you can get out there and plant a crop and then you flood it. I might see if I can pull the board for you to show you. I don't have to use electricity. Wow. He's going to lift a board up and it's going to let water into the impoundment. Wow. And that's letting the water go back to that impoundment. And that always stays full because it's got the spring underneath. It's very A lot of impoundments that have to pump the water. Yeah. <laughs> getting ready for your last harvest you want to space that like that and, and, but I burn I burn every year this will be burned and the stuff will come back so I'm going to run the cows to keep the growth down in case it's allowed I do a little I'm semi organic on the vegetable raising so I'll come scoop some of this up and put it in the pile and let it break down and I'll put it in my watermelon for tomatoes because it's organic so what I'm doing is I'm doing cattle forestry and vegetables and, and the cattle come in, they fertilize the uh, trees and to keep them to growth down while they don't have a wildfire. Yeah. Carly and Kate, both of them are real country. Okay. It's fun, the cows come up every morning, every evening, you can see them from way down there. And I can call them a half a mile. Which one of these is the bull? Of course, he might not like you, but uh, uh, he knows. Hey guys, don't pet them because they might get you. And when I have cell sex, it's like to kill me. Because it's like to kill my family. Right now, we're about two hours outside of Raleigh. So, this is a uh, flight to get away from Raleigh. come and they don't want clay and they don't want organic they want good sand loamy. no they don't loan me they want sand but down where Gill lives where you live that sand don't go down about six feet uh -huh. this guy's going down 30 feet we're on one of the highest points on 306 this land right here is 47 foot above sea level wow. one of the highest how did you figure that out i didn't the the, the engineers know that they need sand for bulkheads for mm -hmm. piers and for septic tank because it's porous lets the water if you put clay in there your septic tank won't drain you got to have sand wow, that's amazing so all these septic systems got to have sand and, and this is where it is used to sand was the poorest land you got now it's the most valuable wow so you're still mining it a That's not bit. mine. This is mine over here. Gotcha. I I want to maybe mine a little more, but you've got to get like ten thousand dollars and all kinds of permits, mm. and you don't do it right. Land management, they'll threaten you five thousand dollar fine per day. Not many. Hayfield. Hayfield. Bass in here. The problem is the birds, egrets, eagles, they eat the fish. Like that over there. That's how you want your pine trees to manage. Nice. Open them up like that? Yeah. Get them that far apart. Wow. Cross the road right here and go down to that lower field. My son lives here. 
230 acres right here. Oh, I got him. Big pond, I see it. This is beautiful back here. Now, is this where you irrigate? I mean, you, you're able to control the water here? What now? The whippers find it, they're going to dig it up, but we like it for the wood duck. Oh, uh, okay. But they don't want the fox to flood. Uh huh. This canal flows into uh -huh. Dawson Creek. Okay. And that's where the beavers did that? Huh. We well, let Scotty do that. Yeah. I always thought the government would take care of the farm. Um, let the big farmer get bigger. This is where I took the sunrise pictures. When you see my sunrise, mm -hmm. and like I said, I'm landscaping that, cleaning the cleaning the trees out. So I got a view looking up the hill. 1800s. 1800s. Again with the leaves. And then George Brooks it goes back to the 1800s. Mm -hmm. So this is where they'll put me someday. Mm -hmm. Is that your grandparents' house right there or your parents' house? Um, that was the house. house that I was born in. It used to be here and it was built in 1873 mm -hmm. and to add on in 1920. Does this gas pump work? It would if it was so tough. This used to be a Texaco? I've got all kinds of things. That tractor I had and I was having too much trouble, I, I sold it to a farmer. The Harvest College for Thanksgiving. That's an old corn grinder. Uh, I've seen I, one of those. I got two of them, and I got. You put the corn in, it strips it right off. Yeah, I switched generations, and I got the ones that my my dad. I tell you how old some of it are. This is my main tractor. That great big one right there. Uh huh. That's killed in the 1930s. Wow. And back then, you go to light grain, you you gutted the thing, and you. Cut some high and you tied the legs, the back legs with the front legs, and you made it a pack. You put the deer on your back and you walk out one or two miles. Mm. This tractor was a good buy and I got a front loader. Heck yeah, so you do all your farming with this one. I do have some other tractors and then I walk back in. What's that bell? I used to ring it. I told Pam to ring it when she needed to get up with me. I was in the center farm too. And come up here. Hold on. I'll put hay up here. And I got some tobacco. This is, is my trying to make money. Well, this is that wood you're talking about? Atlantic white wood. And it's a pretty light color and it's got a cedar smell. That's black walnut. It's a market for specialty wood. And I keep keep some of my hay up here. Up here. So this barn like it was 100 years ago. This barn's 100 years old? Uh, 1920. Wow. So I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm going to heritage and history and old fashioned conservation. Don't get me wrong, I like going to visit Raleigh. Well, I don't like the belt line. I used to read the signs. You don't read the signs, you read the exits. 